Okay, I can cancel CBS All Access because Picard is over. Okay, we've now gotten to the episode 10 of Star Trek Picard, and it drolls on, you know, a bit through the episode, and uh, we'll just go over it a little bit. Um, so we've got... I mean, it's a lot of people running into other people and 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 doing things. Uh, one thing is, Picard is in this uh, room where they're holding him, and he's just kind of playing with the android butterfly. He's not even thinking about trying to get out. He's not trying to escape. He's not trying to do anything. He's just kind of, oh, I'll just camp here until they decide to come kill me. Thanks. Okay, that's not the Picard I know. That's not the Picard that you know I would. I've seen, so they've completely wimped him out. Uh, it's just been kind of dragging on. Um, so on the Borg ship, Narek is uh, trying to create some, uh, trying to create some grenades and and stuff, and and be able to go and you know try and blow up the tower. But he realizes that he can't do that, so he goes to where Rios and Rafi are on the uh, other ship and kind of semi surrenders himself, but just says, Hey, we've got a common enemy. Let's go out and we'll get that common enemy. Okay, at one point, um, they need to uh, fix the fix something on the ship, and they come up and they bring up this little device that just says, um, You know, you have to imagine it. You know, we don't need to use technology. We don't need to use knowledge. We don't need to use skill. We just have to hold this thing and imagine it. And you know, let's fix it with our feelings. Let's just let's just make sure that that we all have a warm feeling, and then you know, then it'll all be fixed and be happy. And so, of course, that's what happens. Um, you know, they fix it with their feelings and stuff. And so it's you know, that that was really dumb. I mean, right there, that just like like okay, this is this is stupid. Um, so we get uh, Jurati. We go back to the lab where Sung and Jurati are talking, and she gets she gets Sung to leave the room so she can rip out the one kind of dead android's eyeball, so she can use that as security to go start unlocking doors, which was kind of good. Finally, um, we had that we had a um, a Jurati who isn't crying isn't whining isn't you know just stress and lip quivering i mean that that got so extremely old she finally you know the last 30 minutes of the show she finally actually becomes an okay character so um it, it was a long journey for that to get to there really like like seriously so the other people back at the at the ship, they're all sitting around a a campfire. They're all talking about their different stories from their different cultures that are all very similar about the end of the world. And that's what they say is coming. So that's why they got to destroy the tower and 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 everything else. Um, shortly after this, when they start the little thing, the Romulans arrive, and of course it's. Uh, uh, Commander, whatever, O, who's actually half Romulan, half Vulcan, which we learned about halfway through, um, that she's the one in charge of the Romulan fleet and stuff. So through all this, Gerardi, Dr. Gerardi uses the eye to break Picard out of his room, and they go back to the ship. So we have uh, Narek, Rios, Rafi, uh Elron all heading into the compound while they're heading out of the compound, while Gerardi and Picard are heading out of the compound. So we get this cross. They don't see each other, but hey, that's okay. So now the one group is trying to get in to, they're playing, you know, the fake I captured this person that you let go. So I'm trying to understand this, right? So they get Narek and they use him as a fake prisoner to come back and say, hey, we're delivering your fake prisoner back to you, even though all these androids that are around here are supposedly just there now just to kill all the humans. So why would you go back there thinking that they weren't just going to kill you when they see you? I, 
I don't I don't get that logic kind of thing. I mean, I know they're waiting for these other entities from some other realm after they do the whole antenna thing to help them destroy the universe. But still, I mean, they come back, they're humans, we're against them. Why didn't we just kill them? I mean, the whole show so far has been about genocide. You know, most episodes were doing some kind of genocide. So I don't know. I didn't, I didn't get that. I didn't think that that was going to be, you know, a viable plot point. But anyway, the writers of the show don't, don't really care for logic at all so there you go okay so picard and gerardi get the ship up in space and they all the little uh flower orchids are up there going after the ship in space um to combat the uh romulans let's move ahead so there we are we're got all the flowers going and everything else and so um now we've got, uh, let's see, the Borg ship, uh, Seven catches the the sister, uh, Nerissa, and, and basically just kills her finally, which was good because she was just, she was over the top annoying, um, which is fine. Um, so now we have a point where Dr. Sung sees an image from the dead android and sees that Sutra was actually the one that killed the android, not Narek. So he understands that this one android is like gone off the rails and is uh, going to actually come after everybody at some point because it's it's gone a little crazy. So he goes and uses something to take Sutra out so that she's not not in charge and not leading everybody to kill everybody and, and stuff and starts to change starts to change Sung's mind, I guess, about whether he should be helping the androids or not. Which realistically, if you are there and the premise of the show, of this part of the show, is that the androids are going to kill all organic beings. And you're an organic being. At some point, no matter what, they're going to come for you. So, to me, I would have given up on them quite a bit earlier. Okay, so the Romulans are there. We got these, these little orchids attacking them. Uh, Gerardi and Picard keep talking about different things. And they say, well, you know, if you could do this, then that would be the Picard maneuver kind of thing. They would call it that. And they said, well, there's already a Picard maneuver where they saw... The Stargazer, where there were two ships there at the same time, kind of thing. So they used some weird mirror thing to project hundreds of, of ships to try and get the Romulans to stop. And meanwhile, the little transmitter is opening some kind of wormhole, and these creatures are starting to come through it, or getting ready to come through it. And uh, the signal that they're doing to create all these illusions of all these ships fails so now it's just them again but then right at the last minute hundreds of starfleet ships show up in true rise of skywalker style boom just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them where they came from how they got them all together and got them together at that point from all over the universe and everything there at that particular moment you know, we, we'll we have no idea ever. And here they come, I think. Yeah, boom, 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 boom. There we go. Now we've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of starships. And then they have some kind of discussion where, like, you really shouldn't do this because, you know, we're going to, you know, help the people on the planet and... Picard eventually convinces Soji to stop building the little tower and why it was only her that could build the tower and none of the other ones are helping really gets got to be confusing and stuff. Why is she the only one that can do it? I think everybody could go do it. I think you could just take over your androids. You're very strong. You're whatever you could do, you know, whatever you want. So I don't know that that didn't make sense either. 
Um, so, I mean, the other people got their little hand grenade, whatever, that they were going to get in to the compound to, you know, Rafi and Rios and all Narek got into the compound and had their special, you know, explosive device that they were going to throw at the tower to destroy the tower. But as soon as they did, Soji grabbed it and just threw it away. So that didn't work. Um, but so the, the whole entire, <laughs> so the Romulans are there for like, a minute, two minutes of the episode. Then the Federation arrives for a minute and it's Riker, of course, which was kind of a nice thing that, you know, it's like, okay, Riker's not going to leave Picard hanging and not going to leave him, you know, just out there to be, to do all this on his own, right? So that was kind of good. I kind of like that. That was one likable thing. You know, they always had their back. They always were there for each other at the last minute, you know, whenever whenever they were needed kind of thing. Which is, that's kind of a Star Trek thing, right? You, you don't give up on your friends, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, Riker's there with all these ships, and then the Romulans are like, okay, well, I guess we'll give up. So they finally give up, and the Romulans fly off, and then the Starfleet ships fly off. So they're only there for like a minute each. So you, now you've taken all of Starfleet, <laughs> basically all the hundreds of ships of Starfleet, sent them all on with this huge mission, and then, well, we're going to be here for a minute, and then they leave. Uh, it would have been better if they would have had, you know, a smaller number of ships, and just had a smaller number of big, bulky, you know, battle-type ships. And then said, you've got numbers, but we've got, you know, we've got moxie. We've got drive and determination and right on our side, you know, kind of thing. To make it, make, you know, I like the odds when they're, you know, you want to root for the underdog kind of thing. But this, they didn't even think of that. I'm like, okay, there you go. See you later. And they're gone. Okay. Woo okay, that was boring and stupid. Uh, so there was no tension there or anything else. So, all right. Done over another boring plot point. Thank you so much for not being there. So then Picard has his little brain problem flare up and then he falls and um, they beam him down to the surface pretty quick and then he dies. And I'm like, okay, well, he can't die because there's a season two. And then I'm thinking in my mind, right as I'm watching this, oh, they're making this other android thing over in the lab so they're just going to move him into that and skip the rest of the plot points i would have thought it would have been better if they would have somehow just revived him like with some borg tech or something and you know if seven would have been there and you know connected into his body somehow and revived him with some borg tech and been able to you know have the borg technology you know take his brain problem out and everything else and, br and bring him back without having to have him die and go through this horribly long dialogue where he sits down with Data and there's this is a dream and, and everything else and we're meandering on that Data really wants to... He wants to be over. He doesn't want to sit here in the simulation anymore. He just kind of wants to have it be done and over with <clears throat> and everything and... <clears throat> So instead of living in this android, you know, simulation that they're using to pull his uh, memories and engrams out to create more androids, he wants it to be over. So Picard says, okay, well, I don't know how I could do that because Picard is dead, right? So, but it's just his consciousness that they've taken and put it in there. And now they're going to take his consciousness and put it into the one android that they were making but of course in doing that they had to make the android the same uh look and feel and and everything as uh a regular you know picard they couldn't you know make him younger or anything else other than you know maybe they'd have to switch actors or something maybe they'll do that in in season three if you know patrick stewart doesn't want to do the show anymore or something but so in this i mean if you can see, so 
<clears throat> so this, so if you can see where this, I'm dragging here, this part here, that's Rios in the little thumbnail down there on the screen. That's Rios. And he's looking down at Picard when Picard is dying. So this is right at 40 minutes into the episode. And we still have <clears throat> 16 minutes left of the episode. So they all drone on about how sad they are and, and everything else. And they have some different conversations about, you know, why they shouldn't care about other, you know, crewmates and everything else and, and stuff and just dragging on and on. And then just dragging on and on conversation between Data and Picard, how Data really wants to them to turn off his simulator and stuff. So then they do that. They go and they... They pull all the little chips out of the uh, little control module thing that they're in. They have, and then finally, you know, data his program and whatever that's been stored in there is is gone, and he's he's finally gone. And then we have the uh, new synthetic Picard. So now we're moving on to a synthetic Picard. So and they all get on the ship and and get ready to go. And of course, with without missing a beat here, we have to have the, uh, where is it here? It's gonna come up here in a second. So they get onto the ship and they do a few things. And then even though we've never had any real interaction between them, of course they gotta be, Rios and Seven have to be holding hands because we have to have, you know, Show some. I, we have to be inclusionary of everybody. We can't like leave anybody out in the whole thing. We have to get them together doing something and being friendly. Okay, whatever. Fine. I we realize this is no longer a kids show, right? So, and then they get to the end of it, and they Picard just says engage, and off, off it goes, and and the episode is completely done and over with. So. Fairly anticlimactic. I mean, there was no, I mean, it just kind of drolled on. I mean, it didn't, it, the part where the Romulans are going, I mean, they're just showing them on the screen. Nobody ever fires at anything. Nobody does anything. They're like, aim the weapons there. No, wait, we got this going on. Okay, aim the weapons there. Okay, no, we got this going on. Okay, aim the weapons over there. Nobody's firing anything. Nobody's actually doing any attacking or anything at all even though you've got hundreds of ships and then other hundreds of ships show up and nobody does anything except they just say, you know, Riker just says, you know, I'm going to be pissed off if you decide to do anything. This planet's under my protection now. Okay, fine, you know. And then, okay, the Romulans give up and then they leave and then the Federation leaves. And then now we're off to let's go kill Picard. So then it's done if it didn't droll on like it does, I mean, if there were actually the episodes that had a beginning, a good middle, and an end where something actually built up to something. I mean, the end of this thing, I mean, they the music didn't even really build very much. I mean, it just didn't, you know, I would expect that at some point the the music would build there would be tension there would be something there would be a last minute thing we got to do this this has to happen now i mean there was a tiny bit of that when they were doing the whole uh making you know mirroring all these hundreds of of fake ships out there that the romulans then had to turn their guns to that and fire they did fire some at the fake ships and at the little uh flower things that came up but once the Federation showed up, it's just it was just conversation, and then, and then everybody leaves. So it, that made it very anticlimactic. It just really didn't. And then Picard just convinces Soji to oh, just turn off. You have the decision. You can turn off. You can do it. Go ahead. And then she turns it off. And it's like, okay. Um, Really? We're just, that's it. Okay. And then and then the episode's over. And basically, well, then there's 14 more minutes of the episode 
going on and on about how we miss Picard, but then Picard's back, and then now he's an android, and then, you know, we get rid of Data and have our identity, you know, inclusionary scene and everything, and then and then out and we're done. I, you can see where my frustration comes in, that it just it continues to droll and everything else. We'll see what happens in Season 2, whether I actually buy into it or whether I actually uh, want to do this again. I mean, it's only a couple of months of CBS All Access, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, I would... If it's going to be the same writers and the same people directing and in control of Star Trek, then it's going to be the same kind of kind of thing it's going to be more foul language more you know garbage storyline and and stuff and just and continue on with that and I, I have such hopes I have such aspirations I mean I know the Orville is coming later on this year hopefully they were able to get a few episodes in the can and done so that we can actually get some released until you know everything gets back rolling and people can get back to work but uh, it maybe would have been better if we would have delayed this, if we would have delayed Picard. As much as I love Patrick Stewart, I have seen him at conventions, and I have seen him on stage at a convention, and when he walks in, the room goes perfectly silent, pin drop silent, because he really commands a room, and he, he can really, really do that from his stage acting and everything, and somebody brought a script of a Shakespeare script and ask that you can ask him questions whatever they just ask can you read you know a little bit of this page and he looked at the page and said oh i know this and read it for, and just did it from memory amazingly so i mean that's what i see is i mean so patrick stewart when he was at this convention there was a certain type of tree that used to be in england that is now no longer in england but was in the Capitol Park around, this was in Sacramento, that was in the Capitol Park. We had some in, on the grounds of the Capitol Park, a tree that is now extinct in England was there in the Capitol Park, growing and big and everything. And he would just, he said he was late because he stood there in awe that these trees are still here, that we still have these trees, that they're being preserved, that at some point, maybe they could bring them back, right? To England and be, and reseed and, and do all that. He was thinking about all that. And in that, he lost a little bit of track of time and then, you know, showed up like five minutes late to the convention. So very deep thinking person, very, you know, room commanding presence of a, of a person. I'm just sad that the script writing and the um, directors and producers and stuff of these episodes and stuff really don't allow that to be brought out. I mean, they could have had him do oration of gigantic magnitude on screen, and that's what they had. I mean, imagine having, you know, a Ferrari that can go 200 miles an hour, and all you ever do with it is go to the store and back and maybe, break, you know, break 35, 40 miles an hour the whole time. You never let it actually run, right? And that's kind of what I think they did with with Patrick Stewart. And it's really it's really a shame because he he can do so much more. Yeah. All right. Well, that's my review, my thoughts, and everything on Star Trek Picard, um, episode ten, et in Arcadia Ego Part Two. There we go. All right. Well, thanks for watching. And if you got any comments about this episode, you you think maybe next time you'll watch the episodes, or you're going to subscribe and won't go through all of them, because you could do that now. You could just subscribe; they're all there. Subscribe for one month, or do the one week trial, or whatever they have, and burn, binge through all of them now and see watch them all, and and maybe get some other comments about what it is, what it was like. Just do that down below. Uh, like, share, subscribe, all those fun YouTube things, and we'll talk to you later. Take care.